Hello and welcome. Today we'll be doing a question from Leet Code called K closest points to origin. It is a medium. Let's get started. So we have a list of points on the plane. Find the K closest points to the origin 0, 0. Here the distance between two points on a plane is the Euclidean distance. So that's just x squared plus y squared squared of that. You may return the answer in any order. The answer is guaranteed to be unique except for the order that it is in. Example 1. Given points 1, 3, negative 2, 2, k equals 1, we output negative 2, 2. Why? Because the distance between 1, 3 is square root of 1 plus 9 or square root of 10. And for negative 2, 2, it is square root of 8. Since square root of 8 is less than square root of 10, we return negative 2, 2. Second example, given points 3, 3, 5, negative 1, negative 2, 4, k equals 2, we can return either negative 3, 3, negative 2, 4, sorry, 3, 3, negative 2, 4, or negative 2, 4, 3, 3, since order doesn't matter. Um, okay, so this is fairly simple. The easiest approach to this would just be sorting the list of points based on their Euclidean distance, taking that sorted list and slicing on k, returning that. This would take n log n because we do want to sort. But is there a way we can do better? We can actually do it in linear time, O of n, and it's this phrase right here. You may return the answer in any order that we're going to be taking advantage of. So if you've ever done quick find, quick select, or if you know how quick sort works, we're going to be using the same principle here. So let's take a look at a few examples first. Suppose we're given points such that their distances come out to be 2, 5, 4, 3, and 6. And suppose k is 3. Now, of course, we can just sort, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, return 2, 3, 4. But what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to pick a random point and call it my pivot. Suppose I pick 5. Now I'm going to go through and see how all the other numbers compare to my pivot. If there are less than the pivot, I'm going to store it in left. If there are greater than it, I'm going to store it in right. So in the end, the order would be left, then pivot, and then right. So in left, I would have 2, 4, and 3. In my right, I would just have 6. Now, what do we notice about the lengths of these lists? Left is 3, pivot is just the one element 1, and right is also 1. But we can just return left as is, because we know left is less than pivot, which is less than right. So if left, if the length of left 3 equals k, then we can just return left, because we know those are our three closest points. And if k equals 4, then we can apply the same logic. We already have left guaranteed to be less than pivot and right. And we also have pivot guaranteed to be less than right. So we have 3 plus 1, 4. We have our four closest elements. And there's something really cool going on here, right? So if I actually sorted this list, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, where is 5 located? It's in its true ordered position. And with this, when I did left, pivot, right, it was the same position 5 is in now. So I had 2, 4, 3, then 5, and then 6. So what does it mean to be sorted, right? If I have a list and I say it's sorted, it means that every element is in a place such that all the elements before it are less than that element, and all the elements after it are greater than that element. But in this case, we don't want to apply it to all elements. We just want to apply it to our pivot. And that is how we're saving time. So to go back to our example, suppose k wasn't 4 and it was 2, and we had still picked pivot 5. What do we do now? Well, we don't actually want to pass in the whole list again. We can just pass in left and our same k equaling 2. So in this case, we just pass in 2, 4, 3 and apply the same thing again. So I pick another pivot, suppose I pick four, well then my left would have two and three, and my right would just have nothing. So in this case, I see that the length of left is two, which equals k, and I would return and end there. But what if k wasn't two? 
what if it was five or let's do six suppose we have another element here a seven so seven would go on the right and this would then be two so we still pick five as our original pivot what do we do now well now we only need to pass in whatever is in right so now we pass in right and for k we actually set it equal to k minus length of left minus one and why are we doing this because we already know we have our four closest taking into account both left and pivot so we need whatever is left from right so if k equals six we have six minus the length of left which is three minus whatever the pivot is which is just one so this equals six minus two minus one or sorry left was three so this was six minus three minus one which is six minus four and this equals two so now we pass in right six and seven it equals two and we just return that and this is how the logic would go now let's take a moment to understand why this is faster and for that, I'm actually going to start off by saying it's not always faster. What if we run into the worst case? So going back to this example, what if our first pivot we picked was 7 and we wanted k equaling 1? So the first pivot is 7. Well, then we need to make comparisons with 2, 5, 4, 3, and 6. So that's five comparisons. So then we take in our left and pass it in again. Suppose now our pivot is 6, in which case we're going to be making comparisons with 2, 5, 4, and 3, so 4. And now we pick pivot 5, we make 3 comparisons, and so forth until we find k, in this case, 1. So in this case, we would be doing n minus 1 up until 1. And summing all of that up, we know it's n into n minus 1 over 2, which is n squared order of n squared, which is much worse than n log n. However, this is just the worst case. Amortize on average, we can approximately say we get around half each time we pick a pivot. So we pick a pivot so that it divides the input list into half each time. So the first time we would go check n elements, then make another comparison with about n over 2 since supposing our first pivot divided in half. Then if we still haven't found our answer, divide in half again and keep going until we really find it. And this is just a geometric sequence that converges to 2n, which is order of n, which is better than n log n. So this is the main concept for it. Let's just go ahead and code this up now. The first thing I'm going to do is write a list of tuples taking in the points and their distances. So for that, I'm gonna make a helper function to find the distance for the points. Passing in point return zero squared plus one squared. And the reason I'm not gonna square root this again is because it's an unnecessary step of computation. If I have 100 and then I had 64, I know 100 is greater than 64. The square root 10 is also greater than 8. So squaring or square rooting doesn't really change that relationship since we're dealing with positive numbers. So I'm going to do LST i solve dot distance on this i or i in points. And now I'm going to call my main function solve.find on lst and k. Let's write this up. Def find lst k. And if the input list has a length of k, then I can just return that. So if length of lst is k, oops, return i of zero for i plus t. 
Now I'm going to do I of zero because we want to return the actual points, not the distances. So the points were stored in that zeroth index. And if this is not true, so if the length is not equal k, then we want to apply our logic. So for that, I'm going to import random. Have a random tuple, random dot choice from this list. And the pivot equals the distance. So that would be tuple one. And I'm just going to go ahead and initialize everything. So left equals empty, right equals empty. In fact, I'm going to make another list of equal. And the reason I'm doing this is if you read the question again, the answer is guaranteed to be unique except for the order that it is in. So if we have five points all with the same distance and k equals two, I can then pick any two from the five and the answer will not be unique. So that can never happen. So if I come across points in which their distance is equal to the pivot, then I know either all of them have to be included in our answer or none of them will be included in our answer because otherwise we would be only picking some out of the whole um, equal, which just won't happen. So this can actually save us computation by keeping another list for equal. So now while I less than length of LST, if, well let's take our current point that we're looking at, LST of I, and the distance of that, current one, now, if this distance is less than the pivot, I'm going to append it to the left. Now, if distance equals pivot, append it to equal. Else, if the distance is greater than the pivot, I add it to the right. And i plus equals 1. And after this while loop is over, we have everything in left equal right. Now I just want to check the length. So length of left equals len left. If this equals k, well then I just want to return. So I'm going to use the same return I had up here. And return it except only for left this time. And if the length of left plus the length of equal equals k, then I'm going to do the same return over here with the addition of equal. So the same thing, but this time on equal. And if k is less than the length of left, I'm just going to call this function again. So self.find, oops, return, return self.find on left and pass in k again. And else, if we know it's not less than k, not equal to k, and not equal to k plus whatever is in equal, then it has to be greater than whatever is in k plus equal, in which case I return what we have from left, what we have from equal, and then whatever else I need from right. So I'm going to return this plus self.find on right with k minus length of left minus length of equal. Let's paste this out of it. And that's about it. So we can run this code now. Intent error. Position arguments. Oh, I don't have so from here. Accepted. Let's submit.
and it is accepted. It's faster than 74% of other Python 3 submissions. Um, before I leave, I want to talk about another optimization you can make. You can actually do this in constant space as well. Right now, we're storing extra arrays for left, right, equal. We can actually do this in place, just running Dutch flag. I did this about like three hours ago just to see the difference. Um, we worsened in runtime, but memory improved slightly. If you want to know more about that, let me know. I can like talk about how I did it, make another video about loop invariance and the algorithm I used for that, or just show you the code for that. Um, otherwise, if you don't have any questions, I'll see you next time. <laughs>